Hello guys, uh, right now I will react to Broken by Concept, so Nathan and Curtis criticize Alessis advice for Ludwig, now if people did not know who Ludwig is, he really did try to do the Styler 1 challenge, but he quit quite early in, the, uh, in his climb, he mainly played in the jungle role, and uh, Nathan and Curtis in here just uh, wants to describe what's the issue with this advice Alessis gave in uh, it happened in October 9 and right now it's 16 so seven days have passed ever since then so if maybe Ludwig did take this advice uh, then he may be misled but before we have a judgment let's also just uh, read whatever Alice had to say focus on 10 cs per minute as a singular and most important thing yes it's not achievable easily on the jungle and treat the game as a single player game with randomly newly generated NPCs varying of skills and talents each game which is really kinda below elite MMR. Also you are playing literally the two two best junglers for what you are trying to do so don't drop them and keep going. Also don't buy control wars in your journey. To plot you learn a lot of different things and understanding of vision isn't something you or your teammates are going to really get it's just burning gold for nothing. Okay. Eat. An utter let's misunderstanding see. of low elo. Let's see what they have to say. That's like saying, just go, just go cook a Michelin star meal. But you highlighted this this tweet here from from LS here. Yeah. So the, the 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 response here, I wanted to get your take on this from a jungler's perspective. Yes. Nathan. Yeah. So the, the the tweet from LS reads: Focus on ten cs per minute as the singular most important thing. Yes, it's not achievable easily on jungle, and treat the game as a single player game with random, newly generated NPCs of varying skills and talents each game, which it really kind of is in below elite MMR. Also, you're playing literally the two best junglers for what you're trying to do. So don't drop them and keep going. Also, don't buy control wards. In your journey to plat, you'll learn a lot of different things. Things And understanding of vision isn't something that you or your teammates are going to really get. It's just burning gold for nothing. Yep. Uh, the control wards, I give that advice a lot, by the way. Uh, I don't want to see people's control control wards in your inventory if you're iron, silver, bronze, whatever. I, like, maybe on, like, one Baron fight or whatever, or, like, that Dragon Soul fight, but the first 20 minutes, yeah, don't waste your gold. So let's talk about the focus on the 10 CS per minute. It's just like a... And this is not just, just an LS thing. People I think this is the shitty advice, you know. <laughs> the thing about this 10 CS per minute is that... Uh, people want this 200 CS at 20 minutes, 10 CS per minute, but quite often in the jungle role it may be also dependent on various factors and uh, if you are very fixated on this I get 10 CS per minute, uh, but you don't and this is where like some um, some mental, you're gonna bump into some mental challenges because I can't achieve this 10 CS per minute because it's not realistic to every, what guys, every game it's not realistic to every jungle type because some junglers are insanely fast clearing like Diana and they accelerate more and more and more and more right but there are some junglers that are like Sejuani there are some junglers that are like Brand or Diana there are some junglers that clear very quickly like Cartus but that may not be applied to every single jungler obviously because some of the tanks are not the fastest at clearing obviously so you can see that there is a pattern where you can't like you can't really go from A to B quickly enough perhaps you can't see as quickly enough because your champion is just simply not capable to maintain it and some junglers may be more ganking oriented than hard farmers so it really depends on what kind of what type of jungler do you play what what are they exhaling exhaling at right um so you got to know like if your jungler is a bit more ganking oriented farming oriented because they're gonna be like definitely like a difference between uh, good farmers and good gankers, you know, and usually that's where like Riot Games tries to sort of balance a little bit the jungle roll around as well. People like this is people love this. People like this, so a lot of people agree with the sentiment. Yeah. So here. this this feedback got uh, yeah four thousand eight hundred. So uh, likes. Telling a bronze player to get ten CS per minute. Uh, so Ludwig actually responded saying ten CS per minute is insane. How is that even possible? <laughs> It's also like hard in a way because in a way it puts too much expectations on people that's what i'm thinking of that's why i say it can be mentally taxing as they are uh, they are saying basically the same thing and if you get invaded and uh, if this or that happens so it's like it's the issue with this like 10 cs per, se per 
second, I mean 5 per minute, is that I think people are gonna be hyper fixated on CSing and they will not do anything, like they, like they will be way too focused on CSing to get that 10 CS per minute, you know? They, they will be way too focused, I think, on CSing to the point where I think just, just people lose out on so many opportunities just because they are very fixated. That, that, that's the feeling it gives off this, this advice, I think. And it is generally not possible for a bronze player with their skill level or iron to even get close or even perception like what that looks like, what that feels like. So what 10 CS per minute really looks like, right? These are these are the fundamentals and things that you can actually break them to even get to the to a realm where you can even have the opportunity to get 10 CS per minute. You are gonna have to know exactly what good ganks and bad ganks are, right? You're not gonna have to you're not com can't gonna compensate for any one of your, your teammates' plays. How how hard is that to do as a bronze and an iron player? You're just running around and you see someone pushed up, you're like, oh, I'm just going to gank them. But there's so many more factors that go into a gank. Uh, taking 10 CS per minute is also not possible as a jungler unless you take sideline farm or counter jungle, in just, especially in the mid game. And again, these are advanced. <laughs> what are some questions that you're going to go about? When do I counter jungle? When do I take my, my teammate sideline farm? There's a lot of grouping and fighting and chaos. So, um, I mean, with anything, there's, only, there's always so much you can do giving people advice with text unless seeing their gameplay. But yeah, the, the focus on 10 CS per minute advice is is literally completely almost useless without breaking down the first <laughs> aspects of like, okay, let's break down what a good gank and bad gank like, is. Let's so play so around our R cooldown. Let's 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 be comfortable letting our teammates die. But I sort of guess what, what maybe Alice is trying to say here is that League's a game of experience and gold, but I probably wouldn't use the dramatic of like, you know, 10 CS per minute. Hmm. Yeah, so I have been asked time and time again, uh, a lot actually recently in my Discord about this feed, like LS, and I want to talk about this feedback, and I want to talk about LS as well, because I get asked questions about LS. So this feedback in my mind is not only, um, not only just wrong, okay. it's literally just, it's, it's, it's so bad that it's ridiculous in my eyes. It is it is a complete and utter misunderstanding of low elo. And I would understand if this advice was given 10 years ago. The fact that this this the, the whole I feel like this is yeah, this feels to be a very like old advice, you know. That's that's <laughs> that's how I see it as well. it seems to be a very like topic or the whole advice of just farm 10 cs a minute it's like. so detached from reality it is mind-boggling yeah. to me <laughs> so this advice from ls giving you know farming 10 cs per minute is one of his most common pieces of, he has a short oh, that he had okay. recently yeah that i got sent mm -hmm. curtis how, how how good is this advice it was a, it was a response you know um how do i win games and blah blah, blah. and then the, you got to farm 10 cs, 10 cs a minute as a laner as a, you know it was it was about mid lane or top lane or, or something like that and and I want to use a, an analogy or a metaphor to describe how, what this actually, what, what this, I, the way I interpret 10 CS per minute as an advice, farm 10 CS per minute. That's like saying, um, uh, just go, just go cook a Michelin star meal. Just, just go, just do that. Why don't I just do that? So if someone say someone asks a question, what should I cook my partner for dinner tonight? Um, why don't you just cook this black truffle lobster thing from um, Gordon yeah. Ramsay? People might think that's an extreme example, but it, it literally is that it example. Literally, ten, ten, is. ten CS per minute is like beautiful, almost perfectly. Legendary. I can't. I okay. Let me put it in perspective. Ten CS per minute, right? In order to get ten CS per minute, this is again of a jungler as well. By the way, as a jungler, it's not even. It's it's just a meme, right? Mm. It's just not even. Mm. It's just not even talking about it. It's mm. just so incorrect. It's unbelievable. Um, for a laner, it's it's even hard, right? Let alone a laner. To farm TN CS per minute, right? You would have to have beautiful wave management. You'd have to know your matchups. You would have to have beautiful resets. You would have to know how to use your TP well. You would have to know when to say no to plays. You would have to know how to shove side waves out properly. You would have to say, you would have to learn to like fix lane assignments. You would have to have good quality threat assessment because if you die, you're not going to get farm TN CS per minute. You would have to. What is this book? You can't hurt me. Oh wait, that's David Goggins. I just now noticed. Basically, be an elite level yeah. player. Who's smurfing way above their pay grade to get ten CS per minute. At the essence, really, the summary is ten CS per minute is purely purely a byproduct of everything. It's like play, it's just playing. It's like saying just play, just be a pro level league player. Yeah. That's what. That's the way. I
maybe he just watches too much pro play. That's what the vibe he gave off as well. I'm just thinking like maybe too much pro play, too much that Corky farms or whatever champion farms at those 200 around 200 CS per minute. But 20 minutes, I mean, it's just not yeah, I interpret that. Be a pro level league player, just do that. Look, go to Faker and just copy Faker. But it's it's so it's not only bad advice, Nathan. It's literally I see what you're saying. Unhelpful. You think it's just absolutely unhelpful Be because yeah. because what you're doing, what you're what you when you, when the average player right who really respects LS and let's say they're a bronze player or a silver player or a gold player or a platinum player. And they hear that advice, just farm test this for a minute. What they're going to do, this is literally what they do. I've seen it. They say, they ignore well, everything. everything. Yeah, and if from a jungler's perspective, they will just literally be on their camps on the spot and just be an, an AFK the Or whole even game. a laner. Yeah. They're just not going to do any, no. they're not going to move to any place. No. And not, there's free opportunities everywhere. Free, they're, they're literally missing beautiful opportunities. That's what I said earlier. Please <laughs> play two v twos or 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 solo kill their lane or whatever the hell it might be. They're just going to tunnel vision on hitting minions. They're not going to win trades. And I've seen it. I've literally seen it. I'm just going to speak from my experience because I've I've had LS fanboys come into my program. I literally had someone called um, LS fanboy or something. <laughs> yeah. Right? His name that was his name. Was yeah. like, it was like LS fan or something. Yeah. And he would play Annie, following uh, LS advice, which is also terrible advice. Don't do not play Annie. No one play Annie. I, I mean. Why is that so bad? <laughs> I feel like... I don't know. I mean, in, in the current meta, he's not... I don't know. Not the best, but I think it's fine for the can ranks. explain why in a moment. Um, and they don't know how to trade. They don't know how to play the game of League of Legends because they're so hell-bent on farming that everything else is completely yeah, exploded. Yeah. And their view of yeah. the game just becomes their distorted. Their view of the game yeah. becomes super distorted. I could imagine those players being really hard to coach. Very, very, very yeah. hard to coach. And I had to work literally years with this client, this LS fanboy, his yeah. name was in the name or whatever. I won't say his actual name. Um, and it took me years to undo his habits. Years. Yeah, he was what? so what? messed up, his view of the game. Now, I'm not saying that's every single person that LS, you know, who's a fan of LS, but I'm just saying that this this advice is not only wrong, it's 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 straight up unhelpful. It's literally unhelpful. And so I think that, um, and this is, the, this is the interesting thing. I want to expand this out a little bit more just to LS. LS is an incredibly smart individual. Very, very smart. With Thinks the game. about the game really deeply, draft, creative picks, LS, items. LS has takes on the game that are well, um, that are innovative, that are groundbreaking, that are, um, you know, that are, to be honest, ahead of his time. He has, he, he, was, he, he talks about concepts that are literally ahead of his time. The way he thinks about comp. But uh, I think the main issue is he maybe does not have like a bad tailor that advices to lower rank players. Because even so, like, I don't know if in these days, if he does coach players under gold, but before that was the thing, he does not coach uh, uh, players under gold. That was the thing in the past. Now, I'm not sure if he changed it. I think he does not do individual coachings. I'm not sure, honestly. But uh, the, I, the whole idea is, you know, that, um, he, like, uh, I think you just have to, like, understand, like, from, to, like, you have to know from the perspective itself of the beginner, you know. You have to know how to teach, right? You have to know how to teach beginner players as well. People at different positions. Levels. The way the way he views the game is very unique. Certain things. But then there's other things that he says that I believe that are completely off. Be off the beaten path, not based in reality, completely wrong. I I would say he struggles a lot with the lower, just is just, just, just the, lower the, the classic high elo. He's a high. He's in my eyes a high elo coach. Yeah, and a pro protein. Yeah, he's coach. a pro team yeah. coach, exactly. Right. And they're really two different things, guys. They really are. I think LS as well is a classic example of someone that is very smart, but is also a, a can't teach. Mm. So there are the, so people get to realize, and this is why pro players a lot of time aren't great coaches because they're so. They've played the game at a high level for so long and worked with so many elite players that they can't actually resonate. They can't. They can't empathize with what it's like to to be at a low level at a game because it was. They've been such a good gamer for so, so long, long yeah. and I was in that. Show. It literally took me years. That's what when we uh, came out of pro, that with the exact same, we, and we just didn't. We had to reverse engineer what we do. We didn't realize how much we knew about the game, how much we did intuitively that we had to break down completely. So what Ellis Ellis means well with this with this feedback, right? Of course. But in his mind, he can't actually. He hasn't developed the skill of being able to empathize and understand and really deconstruct what it means 
needs to be low elo. So he has these very generic concepts that 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 he's like lived by for years, and he's repeated them over and over and over again. And he hasn't updated his hypothesis, but the game has changed. And so I think people have also realized that this is just not good advice. So again, I think LS is one of those very you know, he's very unique characters where I've, I've, I, very rarely I see someone that is so right about some things and so ahead of his time and so genius, but then also so incredibly wrong about certain things. It's like Doper in a way. I think Doper is completely fucking in la-la land when it comes to certain things, <laughs> yeah. but he's really, really smart when it yeah. comes to other things. Yeah. And so, and then when people say, well, what is my take on LS? Like, you know, what do I think of him? As, and, and I'm like, I've never spoken to LS. I've tried to reach out to him. He doesn't reply to anything I say. He's been critical of me, even though he's never had a conversation to me. He doesn't, he actually doesn't assume that I exist. Whenever anyone asks, he literally ignores it. <laughs> That's so I'm not in his worldview, apparently. Yeah. Um, but yeah. aside from that, I do respect LS. I think he's given a lot to the community. But Absolutely. I think it's really awkward to talk about LS because, again, I agree heavily. And I think he has, does have a lot of amazing concepts. I'll give you, and then there's another thing about LS that I will say, and I'm not saying this is, I'm not, t I don't want this to be targeting LS. I think a lot of coaches are guilty of this. He says things with so much conviction that you can't disagree with him. So I got sent one of his recent coaching sessions with Raynad, who was a StarCraft pro. And in this review, because I'm a mid lane coach and I'm very, I, I would argue that I'm one of the best in the world. And he was coaching this Syndra player. And he said something that was so wrong. He says something like, you can't use your abilities here because you're going to go Oom. You don't go Oom with Syndra because you, your, your passive gives you back mana. And he was like, you have to base here. I'm like, no, you don't. There's no way in a million years you have to base here. But the way LS said it and the way, and, and from the general public, if you're, not in, if you're not equally knowledgeable as LS or you don't understand the game very well, what happens is that because the way he speaks is with so much conviction that there's no room for um, disagreement. It's almost as if like he crystallizes everything he says. So there's no room for like um, disagreement in a way. And I almost feel like that's LS's biggest flaw is that I feel like my feedback to LS is that. But that's the thing is that the, in a way they have some pressure on them to crystallize perhaps their arguments or they uh, maybe it's from a business perspective that they have to sound confident in some way, less disagreeable in some way because quite a lot of people tend to bite, you know, if he is wrong about a certain thing, or maybe he may, he may seem to be a worse coach, you know, if he can, can be wrong about a certain thing. And um, but that's, a, that's really the problem in our current society in a way that uh, when, when someone doesn't have enough information about a certain thing, it doesn't have to be specifically a lead coach, it could be a doctor. Um, quite often they're not looked uh, at with a good eye, you know, they're definitely like looked down in certain way if they don't exactly know something, but uh, trust me, it can happen that uh, the doctors are googling something in front of your eyes, right, when even though they did learn uh, things for over 10 years to become a doctor, just because like, uh, in a way, in you know, in their profession, uh, I go a little bit off the subject, but uh, in, in their profession, you know, uh, the whole thing is about that uh, viruses, new viruses can kick in, bacteria can mutate, uh, new cures, right, new pills come up, and uh, they constantly have to adapt to things, they have to memorize things, and uh, surely, like, they, they can be very, very good at memorizing things, but sometimes it just doesn't comes up, it just doesn't exactly comes up something, and that's where, like, some of them just uh, grab a book and and look at that specific thing or google it right it's actually like a real thing that they google in some places sometimes even in front of you legit in front of you they google something to come up with a more precise answer just because it can be so difficult it actually can be like some like people don't even reach that level where it's so lots of people don't even reach that level where it's so difficult to memorize everything to perfection because for them it's also very important um to the point where it's like it, it, can, it just can't be like, like there is just so much information to store, you know, and you just simply can't, you know. That's what people wish that doctor, they know everything, but they just can't store so much information and then they are stressed out and, and then they have to relearn new, learn new things, you know, adapt to certain things. So that, that, that's why they just put so much emphasis on just like reading out something or just googling something up because that's what happens you know to like 
in school like we are all the time had these type of teachers and sometimes they're also like checking the book about a certain subject you know sometimes to sort of refresh their memory because it's not always like that they completely forgot about something you know the reason i feel like he struggles to adapt and evolve with the game and update his concepts is because he's so passionate about his particular view of the game he crystallizes his view and so he has no room for growth and so i think that like when people watch ls people think oh my god this guy's the second coming of jesus this guy's the smartest guy i've ever heard but where you got to be careful and where with Alice's content, yes, he does say things that are correct, but he also says things that are in completely incorrect, but he says them with the exact same level, level of conviction. There's not like, hmm, I'm kind of unsure about this. No, it's like everything is one, I'm 100% sure type thing. That's the vibe I get from LS. So so it's it's very hard. For, it, people. That's why people kind of fall for that ch the church of LS and the church of whatever, the Leandries, whatever his whole thing, his spiel is, that I feel like there's not much room for disagreement. And then if you disagree with LS, you're automatically, you have to be wrong because he said these things with so much conviction. He's the second coming of Jesus. So there's no room for actual disagreement. And that's how I felt when it comes to LS. So either you see through that facade, you're someone that actually understands the game and you see through that facade of, of uh, oh yeah, what he's actually saying sounds smart, but it's actually bullshit. Like the way he speaks about 10 CS a minute on his shorts and like he's, I've been watching his shorts recently. He says it with so much confidence I've never heard someone say such bad advice with so much confidence. That's my, it's mind boggling to me. Like you're literally giving the, not only incorrect advice, but so, literally sabotaging advice. I think it, quite often he doesn't sound that perhaps doubtful enough. He doesn't uh, allow himself to be, to have some doubt in certain things because it comes down to that even so Nietzsche, when he had his students, he actually quite often preferred if they don't agree with everything and perhaps that's how his audience should be as well. Um, Nietzsche did actually recommend uh, his, uh, his students, his audience, ideally to doubt things, right? To actually think about what he has to say uh, without um, absolutely accepting, absolutely believing what he is saying because this can also give them room to grow to you know, perhaps some new thinking patterns and not only the students but everyone including Nietzsche can learn out of this this type of um, situations right so that's why like I think he should allow more doubt I think um, bias but in such a confident manner. So for me, it's like as a coach, if I didn't absolutely know what I'm saying, I, I literally say to clients, I don't know. I get asked all the time, shit, I don't. I'm like, look, I'll be honest, I don't really know. You should probably talk to that guy. But as a coach, I feel like we have a responsibility to say that we don't know because the cost of someone who... But that's the thing that is often just so much pressure, right? Especially when like 3,000, 4,000 people watch him. There's just so much pressure on certain people of a certain high profession that they, I think they're just way too pressured to like say, I don't know. I don't know. So often they come off with a bad answer, uh, <coughs> which can also happen, you know, because they're too pressured to say, I don't know. So they try to cook up something. That's also a realistic thing, you know. Trust our opinion. They're just going to blindly follow what we say. We are in a position of authority as coaches. If we make YouTube content, there's people who listen to this podcast that really, really respect our opinion. Not just that, but we're also, you know, people pay us money. We're liable to get people results as well, right? Like that's another thing. Exactly right. I don't want to, I would rather. You know that me saying that you're not going to get it or you're going to go down the wrong path. I'll just say I don't know and that's going to be more beneficial to you. Like we would rather sound like sometimes less intelligent or like maybe we don't know as much or we don't sound as confident because we're willing to say that we don't maybe know something that well. But I would rather do that because this, the, the reality is I'm not going to know everything, every little single thing about the game. It's not unfit. And there are people that know more about particular things about the game than me. But I'm, we're not afraid to say that because we understand that that's what's going to get them results. But then the problem, though, from the outside is that people assume that because we're saying that we don't know maybe about something, that we're less confident, we're less competent. Yeah, that's the thing. I think maybe he does lack the courage to be disliked sometimes, you know. And that I, I seen this pattern in, in different coaches, obviously, not only specifically in um, LS, that it can happen that they just don't have the courage to say, I don't know, man. I just don't know, man. It can happen. 
so then we don't have the same sort of um it's like it it, it, it i guess bites us in the ass i guess from a marketing or from influence a, from an influence exactly from an influence perspective so this is this is why this is again this is my, that's my whole yeah, spiel on I ls think i think it's quite complicated what, one other thing that ls and also other high elo coaches don't really think too much of what we really explore in this podcast and why people come to our podcast as a niche podcast is the stage four issues and all the invisible yes. things <clears throat> that you don't realize is going on in the minds of stage four out of the game issues uh, tilt sleep toxic relationship with the game focus and lp promotes comparing self to app that's a stage thing that's a mere difference when you're in every position of uh lower ranked or new players because you know, it's just about the game, 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 game with the high because that's what it, you know. That's what it really that's what is, it is for high elo. For, that's time, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they obviously the will still part. have you know their psychological you know things that draw them back or narratives that they have, of course, right. But uh, in terms of like you know the, the improvement, it's like little one percent adjustments for them. But you know, it might just be like a thirty percent for like a silver player that just for some reason just completely mentally checks out lane in against a Cassidy and starts losing the lane. And that's like what that. that's from people that I've I know that have worked with LS at a pro level. That's their criticism. The, the criticism with LS isn't like he has some good ideas, but he doesn't have any perception. It's like a limited, psychological, the aspect psychological of the aspect of the game yeah. because he's only talking about the game. He doesn't understand. He's not recognizing that there is a whole layer of stage four, which is a huge part of League of Legends because it's a mental game. Yes. Right. So, uh, look, I think that, again, just to summarize, I think that, yeah, there's some there's some good stuff here. But specifically with the 10 CS minute, it just drives me insane. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's 10 CS per minute. It's the end goal. It's not the it's advice. It's not even a goal. It's not even a no, goal. It's Straight not. up, it's, it's actually. so many of my games, I don't get that 10 CS per minute. Like, you know, if, it's not even me. We, look, we can look at better players, rank one land, <laughs> rank one land, whatever player. Um, and uh, quite often we can see that, you know, let's say this guy is like in the land, the highest ranked player this game he played ADC. Um, the game lasted 223 and 45, uh, 45 minutes right now. In here, we don't have that 10 minutes per second. And this is supposed to be one of the best players in land. Rank one player as an example. But, you know, we can go, you know, to better servers. I guess like EU, we can go, you know, pro player rank three in the world. Rank one in EU, rank one player, right? They look at the best possible player then, right? It's totally fine. Now in here we have a Jaxine, 151 CS, 23 minutes. Where the fuck is that 10 minutes per second from the best possible player? Right, like I wasn't even clicking on my profile because I'm like, okay, there are way better players than Lord Coach KB. Let's see if they can do it. Often it's not like that. You just so often it's not like that. Because you got to remember people are not even playing in pro play or something. Actually, should be deleted from the whole vernacular yeah, of League of Legends. you're right. I, well, like like I've some... never came into a game where I'm going to get 10 CS minute, yeah. minute. Even at the highest level, you don't look at... Chovy doesn't come into the game with a focus on... Faker doesn't come into the game with a focus on 10 CS per minute. They're thinking, how do I take good quality trades? It's every... It's how do I every win decision. the game? Yeah. How do I win the fucking game? Mm. What's my role in this game? What's mm. the win condition? Where do I need to be and why? Mm. Yeah, no, 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 no shit. We want to be efficient. We don't want to miss minions. That's a given. You don't need to... Assume, that's... You don't need to state that. That's like saying, oh, you, you don't forget to breathe. It's like, well, no shit. I got to breathe. You know, that's like, yeah. of course, if I want to be a human, I got to breathe. In League, that is the foundation of the game is to hit minions and get gold, right? And so as a high level player, you already intuitively understand that you need to be hyper efficient and, and be careful with your side lane man management and make sure you get your cannons and your last hits. Now, it's not like anyone doesn't want more farm. Everyone at the high level automatically... You don't watch a single high level player that doesn't get good quality farm because they don't get there anyway, right? The difference maker is their create... The, you know, okay, well, there's a lot of difference makers in high elo. The quality of their skirmishing. Um, how good are they at... at um, they're trading in lane, they're micro in lane, they're spacing, they're, they're, they're mental stack, their threat assessment, their ability to you know do all these things at the same time. It's not, 10 CS, 10 CS per minute is playing the game of League of Legends at the absolute highest level with a freed up mental stack, developed mental stack, having every other box ticked. That's why it's useless. Hmm. That's why it's a completely futile concept. You can have 10 CS per minute and 
be a high impact player, make every decision is beautiful, and you can be a 10 cents per minute and you can be a complete bot and AFK. Exactly. Those right. things exist. They can be. They co- just, yeah, they yeah. coexist. Exactly right. Exactly right. It just doesn't make sense. Doesn't no. make sense. You don't, you don't go into the game thinking about that. You're right. It no. should be a deleted term. Because I had like some students as well, like having on the side some OP, .gg or whatever application in here. They played League. And the whole goal of the fucking application was to track that CS per minute and people that were in higher ranks, they had to have, they're supposed to have more, I think. The ones in lower ranks are supposed to have less or something, but there was some dumbass CS tracker. And I told people, ideally, don't even need that because there are just like so many like circumstances you can get in and that's just gonna put more pressure on you and you're gonna chase more and more that number. and often when it does not happen, which will often happen, that it, you will not reach that certain CS, you will be like, yeah, bro, I'm not doing something. Play term. It can compl- it, it, that term could be removed tomorrow and not a single person <laughs> would miss it. It, it. It's like when we talk about KDA, Curtis, you know, and like, you know how we talk about we end games and we don't even realize what our scoreline was. I have no idea. To the point, I don't even know what the scoreline is in, in the game in terms of kills. I don't even look at that. Mm. I just look at who's fed, who's weak. Item, gold. Yeah. yeah. Does this person have, does you only have Bork yet? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was playing a Rek'Sai game yesterday, dude, and I, I, we were, like, losing the whole time. I just wasn't dying because I, I was just, just... Chaos was happening around. And then I just ended the game, like, 11-3. and three, And it didn't feel like I was 11-3 and three the whole time because also their comp yeah. was also good into me, right? So it was... Um, yeah, it's the same thing like that. It's just a byproduct. It's a byproduct. And I never would be like, I'm going to get 11 kills this game. It's literally just making this good decision. Oh, we'll get a kill there. This decision, this decision... Uh, to protect this lane so that's, here. What, that's my point it's an outdated concept and i think that that we the as of 2024 where we're at is that coaching and and the game has just got a lot more solved like like we okay what i mean by solved is that the teaching of the concepts so so you know okay i'll give you an example right i could have told you five years ago that it was bad to die to a gank but now if i look at someone why they die to a uh, someone dying to a gank I could literally break down exactly why they've died to that gank, where their mental energy was focused, mm-hmm. like the whole concept of the mental stack, mm-hmm. breaking down where the retention was, why this particular concept was occupying yeah. their mental stack. I could speak for 30 minutes on literally the this death, why they died, how they could improve at every single aspect of that death, and what should they prioritize based off where they're at in their journey. And there's that more is- levels to that as well. You've got the value of the gank. It's like, how much resources did you burn? What did the enemy jungler, what did your jungler get, That right? is where we're at now. That yeah. is 20, 2024 coaching, the highest level of coaching right now that we've evolved for years and years and years. Isn't It, it isn't these basic generic things. It's all It's the execution of this. How do you actually get better at this stuff? Because anyone can say, don't die, farm 10 CS a minute track the jungle and and dodge every skill shot anyone can say that where's the value that's my point yep so that's my two cents if anyone you know i get asked that question a lot there you go because people you just link people to that just section link people right to that. exactly right it's finally been and I, you know what I, I would love to speak to ls I okay just, I, I, and, and you know, someone. That's probably, an invitation, then, Curtis. Yes, I want to. I want LS to come on to this podcast, okay. or even me, just do an episode with LS and just talking about the job. game. Yeah. I would love to talk and 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 have a uh, an actual productive conversation about what we agree on, what we don't agree upon, what what is the game of League of Legends? Like, what is the game of League? And this is where where we're probably going to agree on a hell of a lot of things, and we're probably going to disagree on a hell of a lot of things. But I, I just don't see that happening. Um, but I would love for it to happen. Where would you start? What would be the first question that you would want to explore? I think the best way to go about it would actually just be like looking at gameplay together. Yeah, I would just get a VOD up. Get a VOD and, up. and then that Break will, down a gameplay. And, and, and that will lead to other... Yes. You go down rabbit holes when you go... We would like load up a bunch of VODs yeah. of like different ELO brackets. Different and ELO like brackets. we just break down VODs and like... And then, you know, what would you say here? And this is what I would say. This is what would you say? And, you know, how, where... And, and, and we just go... And maybe we, he review we look at his gameplay and he looks at my gameplay yeah. and we just go, you know, shit like that. Like just the game, like this is talk about the game, you know, nothing that's esoteric, nothing that's bigger picture. No, no, no. Just literally show us the game and let's get into the specifics. Yeah. yeah. And remember, we're not just going to be talking about, the, you wouldn't just be talking about the game. It'll be the psychological aspects of yeah. what's happening in front of us in the screen. Yes. Yeah. I would love to psychoanalyze LS's gameplay. Yeah. And wh- I'm like, why you're making those decisions. And also see what he, how he would review his own gameplay. Yeah. How does yeah. he review his own game? What yeah. does he say about his own mistakes? Yeah. That's what I would love to get into. That's fun. 
again, I don't see it happening, but I would yeah. love for that to happen. Yeah. I think that would make some of the most valuable uh, educational mm. and most probably most interesting League of Legends content. Mm. May- well, well, I don't know. You record guides with... Oh, wait, Myster- there's one more minute. Oh, I thought it's... Uh- it Mysterious and Tim and stuff like that. Like, I recorded guides with Perry and we like... Yeah, we would do like review... Like, because sometimes you do like a clip or a mid-game sequence, like in our guides for like Udia, for example, mm. do like a 15-minute sh- mid-game sh- sequence. Tangents. And we go, we'll go on tangents, but we sometimes look over the gameplay and like Perry would be like, why, why, why am I doing this? And like, you see, like, because you, you review it you thought that you were uploading the clip, it was great. And there's still really good learnings, but you're like, oh, shit, I can yeah, optimize this a bit more and stuff. Yeah. And you have that conversation. It's really, it's really fun. And you mm. actually realize how much you could even be improving yourself as well, even mm. though it's guide material, you know? Yeah, 100%. So it does work, the bouncing back and forth between the players that are Especially when there's gameplay knowledgeable. in front of you. Yes. Because that's the thing that, that's the glue. That is know? the glue, yeah. It has to start, start from that. But I'm very open to that. All right, guys, that's it for now. Um... Make sure to like the video and leave a nice comment. Now that's it for now guys. If you have different opinions definitely leave it in the comment section and perhaps we can discuss about a certain thing but remember better leave something that actually makes sense instead of like some type of nonsensical thing in the comment section that's it for now guys have a nice day